action. Good afternoon, people. And this afternoon we're talking about crank pulleys. I've heard a few mentions about people wanting an upgrade crank pulley or uh, where they can buy a replacement crank pulley. Um, and I thought I'd just kind of do a little brief overview. Sorry for the mess. I'm in the middle of just assembling that engine there. And that's what has actually brought this to mind. So what we have here is uh, an arrangement of three different types of crank pulleys. This is the factory one, the Mercedes 606 factory crank pulley. And this has uh, basically a, a rubber, like elastic uh, damper that goes around the edge, which you can just sort of, I need something to point at it with, don't I? This kind of area here is, is like a rubber damper. And then the outer shell, this outer section, uh, can move. And also, this inner section here is also separately mounted on a rubber damper, and that can move. So we've got like two, um, as the main hub, which is solidly fixed, and the pulley, which is solidly fixed to the crankshaft. If you picture it a little bit like a windy gun almost, as the combustion hits the piston, bang, 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 this is kind of going, this is kind of going bang, 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 like that. So the idea being uh, that the outer ring, which is heavy, and the inner ring, which is heavy, these two bits that are flexibly rubber mounted, they are sort of helping take the shock load in. A little bit like a dual mass flywheel almost, um, but the actual driven surface is not uh, rotating independently to the crankshaft. A dual mass wood, the actual flywheel the friction disc is actually not connected to the solid bit. Anyway, let's not try and muddy it too much with that. So that is an elastic version and they, that fly likes me, doesn't it? Uh, and they, <laughs> so that's an elastic version and they have a tendency to fail over time like some rubber things do. They're not terrible, but they can fail. Right, so another type that we have here is a Ross performance one. Now, Ross sent me this prototype one to test uh, on one of our engines um, and I had a little gripe with it and that was that I couldn't take it apart. I wanted to disassemble it um, and uh, these countersink fixings have been Loctited in, which they should have been, you know, to prevent them from coming loose. Um, but I couldn't get them undone, <coughs> the fitting those little Allen key fittings, they do turn too easily. So I asked them if it was possible to change that. Don't know whether or not they have. Other issues that I found with it is that the diameter of the markings uh, are too small. As you can see, the diameter of this one compared to this one, this is where the markings are normally red on a pointer. You can imagine if those two were in line, uh, your pointer is going to be absolutely miles away from the markings. Again, not the end of the world. You could make your own pointer. I don't even think that's an issue really. Um, but that's a design change that I would potentially do. But it was interesting to see how the Ross one works. Uh, the Ross Performance one is similar to the Mercedes version. It's elastic. It uses the same technology as the original. Uh, yeah, it may be more performance uh, biased because of what Ross do and they build things for performance things. So it might be better for higher revs and things like that, but it is still um, an external bonded on elastic version. Um, but still, nevertheless, an option for people. Um, well, I say an option for people. I have actually tried to contact Ross probably three, four times, three times since I got this um, and they just, don't get back to you, they're uh, probably very busy. Um, but I haven't been able to get any of these. I was tempted to pop them on the website for sale for people, um, but I couldn't, I could not get in touch. The, the, no response. Maybe my emails are going to spam. If you're watching this and you work at Ross, um, I think this is all right. I think we could sell it, uh, get into contact or don't. <laughs> so then it leads us on to our third design, which is my own. Now, this one is an interesting one. <clears throat> Forgive the bolts that are all just sat on here for a second because I've just been weighing, weighing it and I'll tell you the weights of these in a second. But this one works slightly differently. This one, again, similar to a Ross, 
how it has a separate internal hub section, um, like a bolted on hub. It has the bolted on hub, as you can see. And then what we're looking at here on the top side is basically a dish. Uh, and underneath this, uh, this section here, so this is the counterweight, which is covered in this red grease here. This is the counterweight. Um, and what happens is, like I was talking about the forces before, as this goes like this with the engine as it's running, this counterweight is able to actually move. Now these are two tap holes, if I can find a bolt that isn't. So basically, if I push on this look, you can see that can actually rotate. I don't even know if I'll be able to do it. Uh, yeah, you see those two lines? If you just look at those two lines, you'll see me move it. If I squeeze very tight, you see how it's moving? That inner section, did you catch it? Kind of, do it again. It's quite hard. You ready? Just yeah, so you can see those two sections, that, that centre section has the ability to move. Now, obviously, it's not meant to be loose. You don't want that to be, um, you know, just spinning around aimlessly like a bearing. Um, and, it, and it's literally suspended by a series of O-rings. So that internal counterweight, which we've calculated, um, basically helps to take out that uh, shock in a similar way, in a similar way. But the difference being that it is inside. So when this is all assembled, that weight is totally encapsulated and it won't deteriorate from things like um, weather, hot, cold, you know, all that kind of business because it's like fully sealed in its own little chamber. And this top section here seals down, seals onto there, and basically, I've, I've kind of done that wrong there because <laughs> it's great to get off. So basically it has a dowel and you have to line the dowel up. This is a prototype version. There's actually an O-ring missing from that inner section. Um, but for the purposes of the video and for my testing, this is going to get used on an engine. So, uh, yeah, and the ace thing, uh, which will make sense to you very soon, is the fact that this, when it's clamped down and all done properly, has the ability to carry an additional pulley. So it's stackable. So currently what we've got on there is a 6PK, six, six rib belt, standard diameter, the same as the other two. <clears throat> but then we can stack it with an additional. Now this is a 10PK uh, additional pulley. And you can put as many as you want on within reason. I want to see someone put like 50 of these on, properly damage the crankshaft. Uh, and this bad boy is going to be driving a supercharger very soon. And that engine that you can see in the background that's getting built with the rods is the engine that you're going to see with that. <clears throat> Whether it'll work or not, I don't know. It's a bit of a trial. It's a bit of a, but it is a rather sexy supercharger and all you guys will know the brand as soon as you see it. It's exciting. So look forward to that one in the next couple of weeks. So let's just quickly, before we leave this, um, cover another couple of issues that we have with crank pulleys and how we solve them. So obviously harmonics is an issue because we are uh, pushing these engines much further than they were originally designed to go. Um, and also age is an issue. So these markings, these original painted on markings on the Mercedes pulley, the rub off, and you might have seen these <clears throat> in some of our Facebook posts before. This thing is basically a jig to allow you to remark your pulley markings on. So should your pulley markings rub off, this helps you align and put them all back into place. It allows you to basically use this tool and engrave your lines back where they are or where they should be rather than having to buy a new pulley. I think the original Mercedes ones were maybe like 500 quid, something like that. They're not available anymore. I've got a feeling the common rail uh, pulley will fit, but they don't have any markings. So something like that would be very useful. You could use that and turn common rail pulleys into 606 pulleys. That's an idea for anyone at home that's making notes on how to make a 606 business. Um, right, so if we go around to the other side, I'm going to show you another little thing that we... Question. You, question, go on. Why do you need multiple layers? Just multiple superchargers? Well, no, this additional layer is just for the supercharger. 
So if you were going to run a normal setup, the same as that one or that one, you just have the single. If you want to run a blower, you put that one on. Oh, and I'll tell you the weights of all these before we move on as well. So <clears throat> I had to write this down. My weight scales only went up to five kilos. So I had to split this one down and weigh it with the bolts and stuff. So the original pulley is 4.2 kilos. That's the standard one. Um, the Ross one is heavier at 4.75 kilos. And mine, fully assembled with the counterweight inside, weighed in at 6.9 kilos. So quite a bit heavier. Um, I'm trying to get as much of that counterweight weight in there as possible because obviously we've only got a certain amount of room to play with so I've really had to kind of squeeze to get that weight in there um, but that's as heavy as I can really get it given the constraint. I don't want to make this heavy, I want to make the weight heavy if that makes sense. It's the weight that we're concerned about. And then one of these additional pulleys if we pop it on is another 1.9 kilos. So that's something to consider. So you'd be 6.9 plus 1.9 if you add them two together. Right, let's go around this side. <clears throat> let's have a look at the original crankshaft. So using the powers of having a workshop and real tangible items at my fingertips, I can show you um, how the original crankshaft uh, pulleys were fastened on. So this, which I actually just had to pull out of the bin, is the original crankshaft keyway. How weird is that? It's like a little band of steel. And that basically sits between those two, uh, those two woodruff slots. It sits in there like that. And then this pulley, the, um, the pulley that drives the oil pump and the cams, basically sits over it, gets pushed up to the back, and then your crank pulley then goes on the front and it sandwiches those two items together. Now it's the friction and the, 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 the tension holding these two together that really is what's stopping the, any of this stuff from rotating. Now, however, because obviously, like we've just discussed, we're pushing higher revs, um, uh, putting a lot more harmonic stress on the engine. And we're also using combinations of flywheels and things that Mercedes probably didn't uh, put into consideration when they were designing their original pulley. We're having issues with the front pulley coming loose. <clears throat> now, I've obviously covered this in the past when I did the old video of how to build a 700 horsepower 606. And I mentioned about a kit where you screw in this little um, uh, jig and then you're, you, you, you can basically drill the pulley. You can basically drill the, the, the crankshaft and pulley at the same time and you can basically put another peg in. Now, that what I mentioned last time is a very good safeguard method to prevent the pulley from slipping. But some, some people out there are spreading a bit of misinformation. And that is that um, it's not the pulley that you need to be worried about, it's the gear behind that drives the cams. <clears throat> That's not true. There's never been, as far as I'm aware, or certainly while I've been building these engines or doing these engines, a situation where this drive sprocket at the back has spun. Now, that keyway obviously does do both items, so understandably, if this one slips, then it's gonna give this one problems. But what we're trying to achieve is pin this before that snaps. So we never want to get ourselves into that situation. And generally what happens is the harmonics loosens the bolt, and when the bolt loosens, this heavy weight as soon as that crankshaft's giving it a bit of this left and right, um, it, it works its way free and the, the nut comes loose and then this ends up spinning and it breaks the keyway. This is kind of under like a more of a permanent tension, quite a consistent load, uh, and it isn't trying to take out harmonics. So I, I think that's the reason why this drive gear never ever spins on the back of the crank. But it's good because in the past when I've had to repair cranks, I've when that's gone wrong, I've never had to sort that. However, Mercedes have already thought of this. If you try and buy the new keyways from Mercedes, you can't buy this anymore, this bizarre little slip of steel. If you order them, this is what you get. Obviously, being a big advocate of genuine Mercedes parts, obviously, as you can see, most of the stuff I'm building all is Mercedes. Um, this is what they supply you. 
a pair of these, just rather regular uh, woodruff keys. And they just push into the original grooves. You don't have to modify anything. I just pop them in there. I'll give them a little tap with a copper hammer. <clears throat> Something like this. Well, we can do this one now just for the just for the guys out there that might not have the special tools like a copper hammer. You could probably borrow them locally. Um, oh no, it won't fit in. Oh God, what am I going to do? Go and get another tool. If anybody's watching this and they happen to have a special tool that I can use because my hammer won't fit in there to knock that in. If you can't, if you can't sense my humour, you need to stop watching my channel. Um, so yeah, pop those two, two keys, two dowels in. And then you just simply fit these as standard, as Mercedes intended. And then of course, after you've done that, then drill and do the pinning, which just does the outer. Now these things are much stronger than the original anyway. Chances are it's never gonna spin with one of these done. But for the sake of it, putting the dowel in, it's cheap insurance, isn't it? And it's certainly what I'm gonna use, uh, especially whilst trying to run a supercharger. I'm going to have that extra force on the front of the crank. I'm really going to want to have that extra bit of traction on that shaft. Would you like as a little treat? It is a bit premature because this engine is being built for that, but it is a bit premature. But would you like to see the supercharger? Come on then. Look at that. At that. Now anybody that's seen one of those before, or anybody that's typed that, type, do something this afternoon, type this into the internet and have a listen. Nice. I hope that it works because it sounds so good. And even if it doesn't, I'm going to put that on my mantelpiece because it's nice. I think that's it. I think I've covered most of the stuff. Oh, people are probably going to be wondering, aren't they? Um, where would I buy one of your crank pulleys, Luke? Well, it's not ready yet, is the honest answer. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the Ross one, I don't know if they've finished testing that yet. I certainly haven't tested that one yet. Um, but mine isn't finished testing yet. And the production costs are going to be quite high. So... Not quite sure where it's going to be priced either, but I want to test it first. Let's test, 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 then sell. Again, write this down, guys. If you're making a super turbo diesel business, wanting to sell all this stuff, write this down. Test the product before you sell it. My word of advice for the day. Bye, everyone. Just one question. Okay. Do you have a mantelpiece? Do I have a mantelpiece? Yeah, what if it is a mantelpiece? Is it the thing above your fire? Yeah, above the fireplace. We... Don't have a mantelpiece. How about you put it in your garage rather than the house? Garage? I don't have a garage. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Bye. Bye.